One of the next things I want to go to is Audio Suite plugins. Now we're in the same session, that same section of audio is down there. What's wrong with this picture? Well, there's two Audio Suite plugins open at once. This was never possible until now. With Windows configs, I can save Audio Suite plugins in any configuration I want. In this case, I'm sound designing this one little, the same little clip. I've got a reverb that's going to assimilate sort of a theater ambience, and then I've got the Futz box from McDSP that's going to basically turn it into a, a radio or television speaker, tiny computer speaker playback. Let me play the little section here. Uh, well, you know who this guy is. And this guy here is Big Dad. You can see all the perspective and changes. TV, are my friends. theater, on, guys. Say hello. theater. Yeah, yeah, there Still in the are. theater. Hello. hello, Now, Big Daddy and Kick-Ass are gonna help us show you TV speakers. by being a hero. The trick is here, how am I gonna do that quickly without having two different tracks with two different reverbs or two different ambience, two perspective sessions. So. You go, here's my first section. Here's my first section. Let's see. This I, this is in the theater. Uh, well, you know who this guy. Great. So I've got that preset in my audio suite plugin. And here's my TV speaker preset. Uh, well, you know who this guy. Right. So a real fast way of doing this would be I'm going to render this, go to the next clip, render this, go to the next clip, render this. Go to the next clip because I know they're alternating back and forth. Go to the next clips, render those. Go to the next TV clip, render that. And go to the final clip and render it back into the reverb. So if I play that back, you're going to see the, the, the changes. Uh, well, you know who this guy is. And this guy here is Big Dead. And these are my friends. Come on in, guys. Say hello. Super fast way of doing quick audio suite plug-in renderings. But notice a couple of things. My clip gain lines are still intact. They have not changed. Another thing that I've noticed is that this one we cut from the reverb from the stage to the TV. Oh, you know who this guy is. It's a little late. So guess what? I'm going to take it and move it back to at the, at the shot change. So now, uh, oh, you know who this guy is. And this guy here is... And there's a little pop at this next section, so what I'm going to do here is put a little crossfade on it. Well, what's wrong with that picture? Audio Suite doesn't leave handles. Well, now it does. In our preferences, we now have default handle length of Audio Suite plugins. I can set it to two seconds or four seconds or whatever I want, or I can decide to do the whole file. So now I can actually crossfade these files without a problem, even though I've already this rendered This guy them. here is Big Dead. And these are my friends. Come on in, guys, say hello. Yeah, yeah, there they are. Hello, hello. Now, and notice that it doesn't change any of my clip gain. I can still fade things in. I can still fade things out. Still very handy. Audio Suite plugins really come a long way. You can have multiple plugins out. You can decide how much of a handle you want on rendering them. Another cool Audio Suite plugin is right here. Again, we've got two Audio Suite plugins open. This time, uh, I'm going to put it on a loop. So we've got a little loop playback here. And what I've got is I've got a reverb and actually a delay setup. And now all the Audio Suite delay and reverb plugins have a little button down here called reverse. And what that does is exactly what you think it does. If I wanted to put a reverse reverb on this clip, I would basically have to record reverb to a separate track, reverse it, back time it so that it actually is in time so the reverb tail's going into the sound rather than coming out of the sound. There's a lot easier way to do that now, and that's like this. So here's the reverb, right? And here's with reverse reverb. It took me longer to talk about it than it did to do it. But say I don't want backwards reverb. Say I want backwards delay. Okay, that's awful. Squeak it a little bit like we normally would. Let's make it a 16th note, but a dotted. A little more feedback. So that's what it sounds like with forward delay. Here's reverse. How long would that take you with a delay to another track to back time it and make it sound all in phase and balance it out right? Now, 
doesn't have to be done with music, can be done with voices. If you want a backwards reverb effect on a voice or a tambourine, use your imagination. But now both reverb and delay have this reverse button on them. Now with Pro Tools 10, all of your Artas virtual instruments still work Even just if you're fine. A million. I like the Velvet, basically a suitcase Rhodes 73 model. Touch me, feel me. All current RTAS virtual instruments still work just like they always have with, with 9 and 10. So we looked at all these things, audio suite handles, metadata retention, audio suite reversing. Okay, let's move on. The Avid Channel Strip. Anybody familiar with the uh, System 5 Euphonics console knows of this channel strip because it's basically the channel strip from within the console, the System 5 and System 5 Fusion. This is the Avid Channel Strip based on the System 5 console. You've got input levels, you've got filters, dynamics, EQ, and output volume all in one channel strip. It actually comes with Pro Tools. I'm just going to run through a couple of cool features on this thing. Let's do it, baby. Here's the filters. Let's do it, baby. Let's do it, do it. I can still feel you in my bed. Let's bring the volume. Near me, touch me, feel me. And even at the bottom of the sea, I can still hear inside my head. Telling me. Some of the cleanest filters I've ever heard. And all the time you were telling me lies. Let's do it, baby. Let's do it, baby. Let's do it, do it. Even if you were a million miles away, I could still feel... EQ is fantastic. One of the great things about this channel strip is that you can actually set the order of the processing. Do you want EQ first? Do you want dynamics first? Filter first, and then dynamics, and then EQ. You can make your output volume pre or post the processing. You can actually have an input trim fader here or gain reduction. So you can look at both. Really a powerful, great sounding EQ filter dynamic section. Let's talk about the AAX platform. What that means is the new 64-bit AX platform plugins will work both on DSP cards and in native. It'll be one plugin, very flexible, very powerful, obviously 64-bit ready. Almost all of our plugins are done, and most, if not all, third-party people are on board with this. And here's a few of the uh, third-party AX that are currently out that I'm actually using. Eventide's got their Princeton Reverb, which is a copy of the old 2016. Actually, the Eventide Omnipressor and the 2016 Reverb are now native plugins, so you don't have to have hardware anymore to run those. The soft tooth, Halo, Dave Hill's Phoenix 2 tape emulators, Sony Oxford stuff are almost done. So there's a bunch of people already on board and many, many more to come. One of the other amazing parts of Pro Tools 10 is the 32-bit floating point sound processing. Anybody that's been using HD native with 9 knows what that's all about, knows what that sound is. But now Pro Tools 10 throughout is 32-bit floating point sound processing. In other words, Every channel is 32-bit float point. The mixer processing within the Pro Tools mixer is 64-bit float. You're dealing with 1,500 dB of dynamic range audio, which is 1,000 dB more than HD TDM. Another portion of Pro Tools 10 that's very, very different and very, very powerful, sort of new features that we've always needed, you can see I've got 16, 24, or 32-bit float file formats. I can have any of those bit depths or all of those bit depths in one session now. I can also choose to have interleaved or non-interleaved files. I can also change between broadcast wave and AIF files in the middle of a session. Another feature of Pro Tools 10 that's very new, I can take this the mix file and go to bounce, and I can actually bounce this out. Let me set a proper output. But I can choose the same features, multiple interleaved mono. I can choose 32-bit float as an export file now. Uh, obviously any sample rate that's possible. Um, but down here at the bottom, you can see I can add it to iTunes library or share it with SoundCloud. And what this means is when I bounce this file out, as soon as it's written to disk, it's going to immediately send it to my iTunes library. So the minute I open iTunes, it'll show up on my iTunes library. Or if it's open, it'll already be there. Uh, same with SoundCloud. If you're familiar with SoundCloud, it's an online streaming service, but basically same deal. Log on to your SoundCloud account through Pro Tools. It remembers your logon. It will automatically log on and send it up to that file. So if you need to share a mix, a voiceover, some sound design ideas, or anything with SoundCloud, 
bounce it out of Pro Tools, it automatically uploads. It's one step function. Another feature that really isn't part of my demo, but I really want to show it to you. I've got this, this is my backwards hip hop drum loop. If somebody hears that and says, oh man, send me that file. I want to have that. I want to write something using that. Normally you have to hide Pro Tools, go to your audio drive, go to the session, open up the audio files, find that, that file, 0097 NYC Hip Hop Drums 13, and then drag it across your network. Well, that wastes a lot of time. So we've got a new feature called Reveal and Finder. So I just right clicked and I can find that in Finder right away. So I can take this feature, drag it, drop it anywhere I want to, and now whoever needs it is on the network. It's Done. There's a new tab up here. Your account, plugins, support, training, upgrades. Basically, this links us right to your Avid account online. If you want to go buy a plugin, if you open up a session you don't have Auto Tune, or if you need a plugin from us that you don't have, from within Pro Tools, you can go there, download it, instantiate it, restart Pro Tools, and you're on. You can upgrade software right from here, get any support, watch training videos right from within Pro Tools. There's a lot of cool little tiny features in 10 that really make your life easier. And the whole idea is to work smarter, not, not, not harder, but work smarter and work faster. Part of the sound that you're hearing tonight is the interface that you saw probably in a couple of the videos earlier is the HD Omni. It's a single rack space interface, eight in, eight out. It's really 10 out because you can see that headphone jack over on the right is a completely separate output, completely separate mix. So you could literally track and use your headphone jack as your QSIN and have it be a completely separate mix from what you're monitoring in the control room or on headphones if you're all in the same room. As far as the features, the Omni's got eight channel metering, both in and out, switchable, two mic pre's with balanced inserts. It's got four line ins with soft clip limiters on them. Uh, it's TRS balanced out, that's how we're monitoring this tonight. Or you can use db 25 for either AS or analog out. Back to the 7151, you can actually monitor 51 to 71, but if you're on a, on a headphone situation, or in just in a two-channel room and you're working on a 5.1 film, there's actually fold down within the Omni. Well, the standalone 14 by 26 channel mixer, I didn't really get when I first saw it. It's like, well, what's that for? Why would I want that? Well, say you've got a singer, you got a guy with a stereo keyboard, you got another guy with an acoustic guitar on a mic, and maybe a drum machine loop or something else going on, and you want to rehearse at home on headphones. Well, you set up a little cue mix on headphones, shut down Pro Tools, shut down your computer. You can use it as a standalone mixer without software, without hardware. Uh, the other side of these things is our Pro Mixing portfolio. I'm actually using the Artist Control in here, one of the Artist series at the bottom. There's the mix with eight faders. The control has touch screen and four faders and transport control. There's transport and then there's color for uh, more for video editing program. We've got the Icon series, the C24, up to the System 5 MC, which is a pure Yukon controller. And then we jump into the, the DSP consoles, the S5 Fusion, the System 5. Max Air is strictly a broadcast. There's no automation, no recording on that. And then the System 5B, which is a broadcast System 5. Places, channels like KNBC, the Grammys use this a lot for, for live mixing. Down in the right hand corner also is the live sound venue series of our console. So we're pretty much covering the range of everything, everywhere from the artist series up to system five and everything in between. Every Pro Tools command has been Yukonized. In Pro Tools 9, there were about 150, 160 Pro Tools commands. Now every command in Pro Tools uh, now shows up as a Yukon command. And I can actually go and find, do menu commands that I can only do with a mouse. I can turn that into a one button push on my touchscreen on my artist control. Both MC Pro and the artist control have the same feature set, uh, which includes creative advanced automation, both with faders and clip gain. And the EQ curves for the new Avid channel strip actually show up on the TFT screen on the MC Pro. Interleaf file support, we talked about that. Mixed file formats, we talked about AIF for broadcast wave or 3216 or 24-bit files. Let me flip over to Pro Tools again, and we'll talk about a little post-production